In this video, I'm gonna show you guys Ryzeal versus Ryzeal. Everything you guys need to know about the mirror match in Ryzeal and how to destroy it. Welcome back to another video. My name is Trip Gaming. For those who don't know me, if you play Yu-Gi-Oh, don't know me, what the heck? And we're gonna go win today against all of Ryzeal in Sam Studio, but my studio, shout out Supreme Pro. Let's get started. Boom! Yeah, that's right. I changed my shirt just to tell you some brand new great news. November 28th. Thursday, November 28th, the Rise Yield Masterclass. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Rise Yield, beginning to end, seven hours of training. Seven hours. It's back to school, baby. Classes in session. But, Miss Finster, you don't understand. Oh, ho, ho, I understand plenty. That's why I'm going to wash this mess off the blacktop right now. Thursday, November 28th, 5 p.m. We're going to hop on Zoom, me and about 100 of you guys. We're going to teach you everything you need to know for next format, how to obliterate every other deck, and how to play Rise Yield, like knowing the back of your hand. Goku will be proud. Ooh, and so will I. I'll see you guys there. This for an ex I was planning to make this extremely pricey just because I put a lot of work into this and I have about 100 lessons, I mean 96 lessons so far that I want to teach you guys about the deck. I'm going to jump that to 100. I'm going to duel. I'm going to get try to duel every single person coming to that master class live in front of everyone in that master class. You're going to have 100 people watching you live uh, on a Discord while we're playing live. So I'm going to try to do every person wants on it. I wanted to make it 100 bucks, but I'm like, I really love you guys. I've been gone for six months. So I dropped the mouse class down to actually $33. And as soon as the mouse class is done, I'm gonna be sending you guys a seven hour recording of all the training. And this recording will be everything you need to know about the deck. Imagine five months worth of training in this five hours, seven hours. Five months worth of training on it. So $33, you can sign up below. It's extremely affordable just so we could teach you guys how to do it. And I'm gonna be releasing two brand new deck lists, one of them which I'll be taking at YCS Anaheim and winning with. Sign up down below, and I'll see you guys Thursday, November 28th at 5 p.m. All night long, baby. We're gonna do a lot of training. Let's get into this Rise Silvers, Rise Hill deck. Let's go. Time to win. I want you guys to see this hand very closely because this is what you're gonna learn at the master class of Rise Hill. You're gonna notice one thing. If you look at my hand now in this scenario, I'm going first. If I normal summon throw rise you, let me tell you right immediately what's gonna happen. There's specific scenarios where it's the correct to hand trap the main deck rise yields. This is one of them. If I normal summon throw rise yield, this shit's getting hand trapped faster than you could possibly imagine because clearly that means there's no X, there's no bonfire, there's no ice rise yield. If you're not trying to normal, like you're wasting your ice rise on this and not ice rise. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna draw two here and I draw small one. Now, now this changes things. This changes things. If the opponent starts with desires, they clearly brick. So that's gonna hit with Ash. Now in this scenario, here's what I'm gonna do. I can outplay him slightly by normal summoning throw rise heal. If that happens after desires, clearly I brick, he hand traps. Then I smarled into X rise heal. But then for what? Like there's no real value in that. So what I think the play is here is the small one for Fualos. I get ice rise heal. And even though I began with five and I small world it because desires, I'm back to five. And field spell, I got rid of my field spell. Sorry, desires, I got rid of my field spell here. It's fine. The field spell is not that broken, okay? The field spell isn't like the Scareclaw field spell or the Medi Calarium or Right Soth or Perlerino. Perlerino, like what? Plus seven, five negates, one card. This card nuts you nothing. It, it, it is a brick to draw. It's not that crazy. It's really not. It's really not that crazy. So if it gets banished, I don't really give a shit. He Veilers the Ice Rise Yield. That was a horrible play. In this scenario, you never do that. I know I want Desires in Small World, but that's what Desires in Small World. You want to know why he Veiled Ice Rise Yield? I want Desires in Small World. I didn't start with the Rise Yield. Typically, you save Small World Desires for the end. That's the power of using cards like Small World Desires as well. It'll make your opponent hand trap the first card. So they hand trap the Ice Rise Yield. I just go throw the Rise Yield. Now I have full combo, basically. I have X Rise Yield in hand. Uh, he's going to hit Imperm the Dual Drive for sure. Uh, that's fine with me. I go X Rise Yield, I get no Rise Yield, and I still have a, a full combo, really. Uh, Dugaris, look at this genius. I go Dugaris, draw two, discard one. I'm not, Nibiru is not resolving this turn because I have three hands towards four cards. I'm gonna simply go Rise Yield, plug in. I'm gonna set the, oh, uh, uh, Dugaris is so crazy. I think that's always gonna go into it because it floods the grave. Assume your dual drive is getting hand trapped, okay? Your dual drive is simply not gonna resolve. If your dual drive doesn't, if your dual drive resolves, cool, you win. If your dual drive does not resolve, you have no cards in your graveyard for no rise up to even get value. That's where Dugaris comes in, where you're able to put your graveyard with cards for Dugaris and then draw. Uh, get Detonator. We're gonna have four, like five interruptions here. A lot of interruptions, actually. 
but it all depends on how he's going to use them uh clear the only problem with uh detonator here is going to get hit with aggregator that doesn't matter to me here's what we're going to do here uh, he's going to use that i'm going to chain the detonator not get rid of the aggregator use that need to go to this and they're going to just chain veiler as well as the last chain link so ice rock x rise the last thing happens gets negated and it gets destroyed putting one less body for him and he's thinking he could cross out but he's like you know i have ice rise who cares ice rise is his last play i'm gonna do a big brain play here you guys ready look at this play pay close attention to how massive my brain is ice rise will affect what would you guys do here yeah i know he has cross out and rise across a lot of people would veiler here to play around like a small their desires uh no here's what you do you guys ready you ash the out of the ice rise yo, immediately why because now if he called buys or cross a designator which is extremely big it's extremely popular in x format extremely in rise yo decks very popular because there's so many defensive slots and they want to protect the dual drive when he chains the cross or called by you just chain veiler you can't do that the other way around where if you go veiler and you change cross or called by you can't ash that then you get literally fucked like bad fuck like not good cross out chain veiler get absolutely scraped bro that was like look that's what we that's what we do that's what we do that's what we do rise of the master class signed up november 29th let's go so that's what we're gonna do there bro and we have wallows we have perilli we have droll this is one of those instances where it's one of those instances where they kind of conflict and you don't have too much of a starter so what i'm gonna do immediately is gonna go perillia i hope that he's at the very least gonna summon a rank four we get some draws i need some draw power badly like crazy. i thought i was you know he thought he i thought i was nice he thought he was nice clearing my board no bro we play around everything here at trip gaming luckily he goes ice rise if i was him with a set d barrier i might have passed but perulia i actually you know i'm not that's cap i would not because perulia is draw a one but he gets a starter so ice the beautiful thing of rise heals is yeah, i draw one but he gets a negate and uh negate pair with d barrier and he's gonna get a follow-up because ice into throw into axe etc so I'm gonna let that resolve. I'm gonna chain Fualos so I could draw. And in this scenario, if I was him, I would have crossed out designated Fualos unquestionably. Unquestionably. Because he's playing around hand traps here. That tells me that he didn't play one of the, the, the Fualos. Like he probably didn't side deck a Fualos going first, which I understand. But because of Fualos and really is so important, I would have definitely crossed out designated Fualos. And uh, the misplay would have been not playing one Fualos going first for a cross out. Because drawing two is substantial, especially when he's protected with D barrier. It's very substantial in this deck, where one card is the difference of winning and losing. Uh, That's why I don't like uh, decks like this. Like Ryzeo's, uh, it's a great deck for sure, but it's not on the power creep level of full power tier limit, full power, even full power snake eye. Full power snake eye, full power tier limit are miles above this deck. Miles above. In this scenario here, you're gonna set D barrier. He doesn't want me to draw an extra card. He knows D barrier will be enough. You're gonna set another pass. Now in this scenario, I mean, it's not the best scenario for us, obviously. Uh, by him not drawing, I assume, I literally assume one of them a D barrier. So that's why siding cross a designator going second and a D barrier is pretty good. A hard draw and D barrier going second is great as well. So I put it in attack literally in case he has D barrier. These are the type of stuff I teach you guys in the classroom. You, a lot of people just automatically put this in defense. You have to always play around a set D barrier post side, always. So what would you do in this scenario where you get D barrier? You want to play the best. I want my Fualos alive. So if I get D barrier, I'm literally thinking throw it, attack, throw it, ice, crash. And then I'm able to Fualos. I'm literally thinking this in my mind. The other scenario I could do is because you're not locked yet when you start with ice rise when you start with ice rise you are not locked into summoning only rank fours so i'm even able to link climb if i really wanted to right now assuming a debarriered i'm debating playing something small in the extra deck where if i get debarried here doing some link combo with these two but they're just not enough the thing i'm thinking is uh charmer so if i enter battle attack attack i go into a charmer like let's say i get debarried charmer summon something but then i don't know what that could get like a charmer and Ending on a Charmer and one of the Ryzeals, what, what really does that get us? Not a lot. So I'm like, eh, screw it. Uh, in this scenario, I'm pretty sure we have a D-Barrier here. Oh, I, oh, here's what I, so I summon X Ryzeal. Why did I summon the X Ryzeal? To just research. Oh, that's fine. This play is fine, actually. I'll tell you why. So I want X Ryzeal here in this scenario because I'm able to just get a free card. Uh, each of these Ryzeals trade off for a hand trap. Does that make sense? Each of them trade off for a hand trap. Oh. In this scenario, he drolls. So he just drolled late on the Thoad. So I'm not able to actually resolve the XYZ because it lagged. I don't like his droll. I don't like his droll at all, actually. Because he, he has D-Barrier, he could have saved the droll for next turn when it would have mattered. I don't like that play at all because now he's losing the D-Barrier for nothing because he's forced to D-Barrier me right now. I go detonator and win. 
so that was a waste of a draw land and d barrier this is how important saving your resources are i have six cards in my hand he should have done the d barrier and saved the draw i'm gonna teach this stuff like where you need to in this scenario he definitely needs the, the barrier right now or he's cooked he goes d barrier i'm like that's fine with me and i'm just gonna clear the board i'm gonna enter battle phase here i'm gonna attack and now i could crash now take this in another big brain play here if i ice rise you crash into ice rise you i'm left with Thode rise you and my fawalos cannot trigger i'm not locked into rank fours yet i did not summon the x rise you because uh draw it was like lagging i'm gonna go into donner instead of crashing ice rise you i'm gonna get rid of my monster and his monster if he wants to bail the donner that's even better he loses an interrupt and that worked even better for me because i have a handful of hand traps look at this scenario i'm the one in the lead now i have six cards in my head he, i got drolled and debarriered these are two broken cards against ryzeal and he has cross out i'm the one in the lead even though i got debarriered and drolled he went first he has droll and debarrier i have six cards in hand and my Puelos is live this turn that's nuts he starts his turn with x ryzeal i'm debate i have so many hand traps i'll tell you guys what i should do here there's a few lines i could veiler this because he's down to so few cards and i could ash the next one drop fualos let him duo drive i'm just going to continue drawing the next res result is he adds with x Ryzeal. i draw he summons anything there's a few lines here i opt to veiler because i assume he has a, like he only opened droll and db i assume another hand defensive card and maybe one Ryzeal. and I want them to kind of extend a bit so I could pressure him into using Fualos. I have a few scenarios. So in this scenario, he goes Thode. I let him add, and then I drop Fualos. I'm just gonna not use the Droll. When I, he goes Ice Rise, yo. He's going, he's like, fuck it. I have Cross Out, I'm going for game. That's his mind, he's, that's what he's thinking. He's like, screw it. Uh, cross Out, I'm gonna just go for game and Cross Out what I can, that's his mind. I draw another Fualos with Fualos. Immediately, I drop that. And now it's gonna be a pretty cool ending to the game. He's being very greedy, in my opinion. But with a, a whole rise of hand and, and because he lost his draw and debarrier last turn with how I played, then I think th this benefits me. He kind of knows he's playing well. Uh, he knows that he needs to go for game right now. See if he can do it versus two Fualos. So his next play is go straight into detonator, allowing me to draw two times. The reason he detonators first before he duo drives is he's trying to protect the duo drive with the, through a ghost ogre. He's straight up going for game. So he knows like he's not like this is game or lose. He goes node to special ice rise on and I'm calculating in my head. If I imperm this, this is still fine for me. He can't win, but I don't know what this card is. It could be a plug-in. I don't know. So I'm just waiting. I don't do anything yet. I allow him to summon it, knowing I'm gonna he's gonna XYZ, I'm gonna draw even more cards. So in this scenario, I have so much stuff I could do. He goes into the dual drive. He's going straight for game here. He's like, fuck, I'm going for game. I'm gonna draw two. Like he can't win to this, right? So what I do in this scenario, he's gonna go dual drive of uh, first effect. I let him attach. I did not ash yet. Keep that in mind. So what he's gonna do here is he's gonna enter battle phase. He's doing very smart. With dual draws effect, they're both they're all 8100. Right now, the combined attack of everything is 8100. So before he enters battle, I'm gonna use effect failure, the witch is gonna use cross a designator. Now that I know every card in the game in his uh field and everything, I win. I'm gonna allow him to enter battle phase as so he can win on 8100. I'm just gonna imprint him. <laughs> I'm gonna be left with 900 at that point. Since I'll be left at 900, he's gonna use dual drive effect main phase two. I'm gonna ash blossom him and I'm gonna win the game. So in this scenario, he doesn't even oh I, I imperm. What the heck am I saying? There's no point for Ash Blossom anyways. Now I just Prosperity. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I have two Imperms left and like two Ghost Ogres left. That's four cards that could somewhat be an interruption on my turn. And I'm not trying to kill him this turn. I'm just trying to like get advantage and win after that. So I'm, I'm gutting for four cards in my deck in this scenario or just something to, to kind of help clear board. And yeah, you can draw Imperms. So that makes this extremely easy. I also had, it didn't even matter. You go X Rise, you'll, uh, did I use Aggregator? I did not use Ag Aggregator. I could even this scenario just negate the Aggregator, summon X Rise, you'll, and just win anyways but uh this makes it a whole lot easier uh, that's the game this is the deck list i explained it in depth in uh previous videos so uh you gotta check out those videos if you guys like to learn more if you guys want to learn about why we're playing night four pots all this stuff uh the list i'm going to show you guys that our rise hill master class will actually be much better the rise hill master class which is going to be on november 28th at thursday november 28th at uh, 6 p.m is in my opinion the greatest master classes of all master classes where i'm going to show you guys more lists of this and some stuff you never thought of this deck has a massive breaking problem uh so in my version i'm actually playing a way different list than this i'm going to show you guys i'm going to challenge everyone at the master class to defeat me which will be impossible but i'm actually playing four or five four to six more extenders depending on what i'm going to remove with small desires and the extenders are starters and extenders i've discovered uh the rank four terra top which i'm going to reveal at that master class and uh the defense cards that you guys should be playing so but as far as cookie cutter lists are concerned this is the best possible one don't play less 
pots you need as many extenders and starters as possible thank you for watching the video see you guys in the next video don't mess up the master class peace